I'm Farah Duro, and you're listening to the PCS Revolution Podcast. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode three of season two of the PCOS Revolution Podcast. And we are talking today with a special guest uh, who is also working with the PCOS Awareness Association. And her name is Michelle. She'd like to just reach out to all of you today because she, uh, she does um, actually have PCOS herself. And she also works with other women to make them aware of how PCOS affects their life and also provide resources. So without further ado, welcome, Michelle. Thank you for having me. I do appreciate it. Great. So tell us, Michelle, how did you get involved with the PCOS Awareness Association? Uh, so I'm actually a, a pretty new addition to the team, um, but I followed the PCOS Awareness Association for a while on uh, Instagram, uh, just because it's always nice to try and find some help anywhere you can, because PCOS is one of those um, things that not many people know about. And so I started following on Instagram, and they actually posted for something uh regarding hiring and um, I reached out and so ever since December I've been a part of the team Um, so I help with social media efforts we have some 5k's coming up uh, this year and really our goal is just to be able to spread knowledge about PCOS and how it how to help women whether it be um, using medication or whether it be a natural form um, trying to find recipes that help or anything like that. So, great. Yes. And could could you tell us a little bit about how, what your experience has been and uh, when were you diagnosed with PCOS? Yeah, absolutely. So I had PCOS for about nine years now. Um, I was diagnosed when I was, I believe, my freshman year of high school. Um, So like most women, when you first, I guess, get your menstrual cycle, uh, the doctors told me that the first year would be kind of irregular, which it was expected. Um, But three years in, it wasn't really changing, and I never really told uh, my mom about it. Um, So fast forward, long story short, I ended up having my cycle for two and a half months. (laughs) Wow. Oh, goodness. Yeah. And I was young, and at the time, I didn't have a job, so I didn't have my own money to go out and buy, you know, pads or tampons or whatever, so I was using my mom's, and she was smart enough to realize that, you know, her supply was uh, deplenishing a lot quicker than it should, and she was like, are you okay? You know, what's wrong? What's going on? Um, And so... Luckily, my mom has PCOS herself. In fact, she had trouble conceiving me. Um, So she kind of asked, she said, are you, and I told her about the fact that I had been on my cycle for two and a half months. And like the next week we were at the OBGYN's office. Um, And yeah, so when I walked in the OBGYN, it was crazy because, you know, there's official diagnosis process that they go through when they uh, diagnose you. And she basically told me, she said, just from looking at you, I can tell that you have PCOS. And she said, you ha- you're you overweight. She said, your voice is pretty deep. Um, you have a dark neck, because a lot of people with PCOS usually have like a dark neck. Um, and then what else was it? There was like this three things she listed off immediately. And she's like, even without going through the diagnosis, I can tell that you have PCOS. But um, from that moment forward, you know, we went through the proper diagnosis process and she did the, um, what is it, the, the sonogram where they actually look at your ovaries and I was able to see the infamous line of pearls on my ovaries of cysts. Uh, so ever since that day, I've actually been on birth control to combat the symptoms. Um, they didn't want to put me on metformin, which is a diabetic medication, because that's another way that they combat PCOS because diabetes runs really strong in my family and they were afraid of me building up an immunity to the medication. They just, they were like, we don't want to, we don't know if you're going to have diabetes in the future, but just in case, let's put you on birth control instead of diabetes medication to prevent that from even happening. So yeah, ever since then, that's pretty much my, my PCOS story. So, mm-hmm. and so then, you know, it, it is interesting that your mom has PCOS because yeah. we have noticed that it, it is genetic in some ways. And I feel like too, 
having a family of diabetics as well, I mean, that just makes you more at risk. So um, I feel like, you know, in your age is, you're 23 right now, correct? Or, yep. Okay. Yes. And so it's been about a less than, well, a little bit under 10 years on birth control then. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, uh, so how are your symptoms right now? How do you feel? Um, right now I'm, I'm pretty good. I've been on the same, uh, type of birth control. Uh, you know, every year you have to go in and check, they check your blood pressure and all of that. Um, my symptoms are still pretty decent. Um, one thing that you'll probably hear from any woman that you interview with, with PCOS is, uh, the weight gain problem. Right now I kind of have my weight under control, but I will say that it's like being on a ham, a hamster on a hamster wheel. Um, because PCOS makes it so difficult to manage your weight and lose weight. And, and like I, with the whole insulin level thing, it's just a constant struggle and a constant battle to keep my weight where I like it to be. Um, but as far as my symptoms are concerned, I have most of, most of my stuff um, taken care of. Uh, but yeah, I mean, when I was younger, there were a lot of other things that, that – I was kind of self-conscious about with having PCOS, um, but now I finally gotten to a point where I'm, I'm kind of okay with it. I don't mind saying that I'm on birth control because back then I was so young. When they put me on birth control, I felt kind of a stigma uh, with being put on it because I wasn't active or anything like that. So I felt weird being on it, but um, now I know that it's you know it's best for my condition to be able to do that because there's been a couple of times where I forget to go to the doctor and I can't, they won't fill my prescription. And immediately when I go off of birth control, my cycle will come and I'll end up be on my cycle for like two weeks, <laughs> three right. weeks. Right. And it's crazy. I mean, really ridiculous. Right. So. It's great that you actually found something that works for you. And I say, you know, we work with PCS from an integrative approach. And in, in my case, I wasn't very lucky with birth control. It didn't work for me. But many, mm -hmm. many women, it does. So uh, and it's a short term. I mean, actually, 10 years is not short term. It's it's right. been a, it's for a while. But, um, yeah. but you know, it is. Um, it is actually working for you currently. So that's important that, um, you know, we actually take that into account that uh, a lot of times the, the problem is coming off of it. And that's what you experience with the, the heavy bleeding because you yeah. also still have the um, underlying issues of PCOS. And um, I actually got an email from someone today uh, who uh, actually is, is your, close to your age. She's around 22. And she said, I've been listening to these shows and I don't know if, if it's really such a big Big deal for me. I have PCOS, but I don't really, you know, and I don't get my period all the time, but I'm not trying to get pregnant. I'm not in a relationship. So I'm not sure if it really affects me that much, you know, and, um, and it's interesting because I remember thinking, you know, growing up, wow, it was great. I, I didn't have my period as many times as everybody else did. And right, I felt like, I, yeah, I was like, oh, every, my, my friends are so jealous. Like, wow, you're just, <laughs> you're so <Right>. lucky. <laughs> I go a whole summer without my period and everyone would be like, what? Yeah, <laughs> so. exactly. What are you taking? That's awesome. But uh, the, uh, you know, so in your, in your early 20s and also, and unless you have cycles like you had that never end also, that could be the other spectrum where, you know, you don't have them for a while. And then you have a cycle that's just the, the never ending cycle. Exactly. Um, so, you know, it can go either way. But um, but in, in, in your age, I, I think that, um, you know, it's working now. Now the problem is when you want to come off. And that's what we try to help with as well um, and educate women on those options so that it's not going to be so traumatic when you come off birth control that you're actually going to be able to manage the, these symptoms. So, right. So anyone right. out there listening, you know, who is taking birth control and it is working for them now, I think that, you know, at that point, whenever you are, eventually you do have to come off. It's not something that you take for the rest of your life. Um, but there are solutions out there. And, um, and I think that, you know, talking about all the different options we have is one thing about how we get the word out to, to women all over the world that actually have PCOS. And there's different degrees of it, obviously. There's mild, very mild cases of PCOS where probably you just, you know, miss a period or two, or it's a little bit, a little delayed, but you don't really notice a whole lot of symptoms. And then like your doctor talked about, there's the cases where you have every, you know, you have 
have the darkening skin, which is their insulin resistance usually showing up. Um, yeah. You have, you know, a deepening voice, which is a little bit, you know, to testosterone elevation and the weight gain. And so, and it's, and when you mentioned struggling with your weight, um, it's something that, you know, you, you're right. You have to stay on top of and be so proactive with because. Yeah, constant. It, I mean, yes. I, I feel like I have friends who can eliminate one thing out of their diet and they can lose weight easily. Whereas with me, I feel like I've gotten to a point where I can manage it, but I basically have to cross all my T's and dot all my I's. So am I drinking all the water? Am I working out five days a week? Am I making sure I'm getting enough protein and, and green vegetables in my diet? Um, so it, I think it can be mentally and emotionally exhausting. I, I used to be really upset when I compare myself to my friends who were able to lose weight a lot easier. Um, but I definitely think I've gotten to a point where I realized, okay, this is what I have. This is what I'm dealing with. And I know, you know, these are the types of foods that allow my body to act more normal. So exactly. To speak. And, and it's kind of so, a benefit. I think that, you know, we talked to a, oh yeah. yeah, it's like, I, I know that you can look on the bright side of it. And we talked to a PCOS coach, um, at, previous episode who said you know what at least we know how our bodies actually respond and what they need because exactly you, you know. <laughs> exactly I, I do see that I it's funny you say that because I used to be really upset about my friends who could you know eat a whole pizza or a whole bowl of pasta because carbs are like a no-no with the whole insulin um and I would be super, super jealous, but now I've realized that it's actually kind of a benefit, only because later on in life, I, I am in my 20s, but later on in life when other problems like you know heart disease or a blood pressure or other things like that may, may pop up, you know, we, with having PCOS, you already have to learn how to eat in a healthy manner to combat your weight, whereas with these people who haven't, um, had to deal with that kind of struggle might have to completely do a 180 on their diet when their metabolism slows down or whatever that may be. So I'm like, at least I know how to eat healthy now. So when I do get older, um, it doesn't affect me as much. Yeah. So. Then, and can you talk to us a little bit about what um, your diet consists of and how you've been able to maintain your weight? Yeah. Um, so like I said, with, with diet, when you're, I feel like when you get diagnosed with PCOS, you're much more prone to diabetes. So, um, and I think it scares a lot of women when they hear that, but I try to think of myself as a diabetic, or I try to look at diets that are uh, beneficial to people with diabetes. And because it runs so strong in my family, that's another reason why I've looked to things like that. Um, so a lot of um, high protein, um, high fiber types of things. So most mornings I wake up and I have oatmeal and strawberries. Um, and I really don't like oatmeal, but I make myself eat it because I know it's good for me. Um, or I'll have like a high protein cereal, like Special K has like a high protein cereal that you can eat. Um, most days uh, for dinner, I'll usually have like some kind of lean meat, whether it be chicken or fish, a green vegetable and like half of a sweet potato. Um, I'm trying to think what else, uh, I really have gotten into making soups since it's cold now, at least right now it's kind of cold. Uh, and I really like to get into slow cooker kinds of soups that have a lot of, um, protein in them. So chicken noodle soups, things that don't have a lot of heavy cream in them are, are best. Um, but then also looking into stuff like chilies that have beans and because beans will give you your protein they'll give you your fiber um and they can also be kind of low calorie uh so yeah pretty much mixing it up but i don't i don't try to restrict myself too much uh usually during the work week what has worked for me is during the work week so let's say monday through friday i eat according to PCOS or diabetic standards, if you will. And then on the weekends, if I want a slice of pizza, I'll allow myself a slice of pizza or brownies or ice cream or whatever it is that I'm looking forward to that week. So that's yes, that's that 80, 80, 20 rule, which is so, yeah, I think it's just key because then, you know, sometimes you, you get off track and you blame yourself and there's shame and, you know, just right. totally get derailed. So that's great that you've developed that that plan of giving yourself a little bit of freedom with that. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, with the weight also, I mean, losing weight or keeping your weight 
you know, maintain. It also helps with your glucose levels and it helps the way your body uses insulin. So you can actually um, see a huge difference. Even if you are, let's say, not on birth control and you, your cycles became re- regular, it would actually help your cycles regulate when that you know extra weight was actually off. And um, and I, you know, I just yeah. I think that's My- important. Oh, sorry. I didn't want to cut you off. But um, my mom, like I said, my mom has PCOS. Um, and it's funny because, you know, she's much older than me. So when PCOS first came out, they didn't have as much studies on it, I think, as they have now, at least for her case. Um, and she's never taken birth control. Um, but one of the ways that she manages her PCOS is through diet and exercise. And her cycle doesn't come in the normal 28 days. It might come in 29 or 31 or 32 days. But she's found, just from speaking with her, she's found that when she's lower in weight, her cycle regulates. It'll come every 28 days the way it's supposed to and and stuff like that. So that's a perfect example of someone who can use diet and exercise to manage their PCOS and um, regulate your cycle. So. Right. And, you know, the probably the advantage is that she knowing that she has PCOS and seeing, you know, that it, also she she was having a you know a little difficulty conceiving you. She probably in her mind had some, you know, inkling like probably my daughter might have PCOS, you know, and exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yes, <laughs> exactly. That's why when she, you know, asked me about it, she was like, or, you know, I have this. Let me tell you about it. And I, I, you know, at age 14, I wanted nothing to do with the OBGYN. I did not want to go. Um, but she's like, it's fine. It's okay. I have it. So I definitely consider myself blessed to have a, a mom who knew about it because there's a lot of people who don't have parents who know about it or anyone who knows about it. And they don't know it until they're my age. Now they go into the doctor and they complain about the symptoms that they have. And then the doctor tells them. So I do consider myself extremely blessed in that regard. So, yeah. And I think that, uh, you know, having that foresight also and knowing that, you know, women who have PCOS, they actually are, at risk, they have a higher, like fifty percent um, chance of developing diabetes, more so than someone who did not have PCOS, and that that actually is before the age of forty. So, uh, wow. yes, yeah, so fifty percent, more than fifty percent of women with PCOS will develop diabetes or pre-diabetes before they turn forty years old. So, um, if we think about that, that's because of the insulin resistance building. Um, the girl who who emailed me saying maybe it's not a big deal, I think that is a big deal because you actually have the great opportunity to get on a low carb diet, get on, you know, some treatment to actually start helping with those symptoms and starting to actually reverse or prevent diabetes all, all together, actually. Absolutely. And knowledge is power. That's why I'm, I'm, you know, really excited that there is an association out there to help women, um, who are newly diagnosed or really don't know what steps to take. So that's great. Yeah. And um, and I would say also with uh, heart disease, I mean, we mentioned high blood pressure. I mean, there's a statistic that's, you know, women with PCOS have four to seven times greater risk of heart attack than women of the same age without PCOS. So I think that's when I mean, these are these are kind of depressing statistics, but they're actually oh, yeah. they're out there. And I see it all the time in practice, too, with our um, patients who have had children, actually, who have PCOS. And the uh, doctors have said, well, just eat whatever you want it's totally fine um because you've had your kids and it's not really a big deal anymore um but it actually what happens is we actually saw one of our patients who was um, on insulin she's on hypertension Mm -hmm. medications blood thinners um she's 80 pounds overweight um and multiple medications for depression so we just see that it if it's not managed like this is what happens and yeah and by the way she's only 36 so, wow. yeah. Oh, my goodness. So I think that it's um, this is why we're, you know, trying to get the message out there. And uh, and by your mom actually finding a way to manage her symptoms naturally, um, you know, it's kind of the same with me. We have a little barometer like, all right, if we pass our carb intake, then we start to feel kind of kind of crappy. Like, all right, this is mm-hmm. not, you know, I can tell she, a difference. Yeah. Yeah. Like she won't eat pasta. Um in the evening or she she knows you know okay if I eat pasta I need to also eat a green vegetable because if I eat pasta just by itself it's going to put me to sleep 
Um, so just to balance all of that out. But yeah, she's definitely learned. And she's even learned, you know, what she's, you know, gone up and down in her weight enough that she's learned at what point, like I think if she weighs, let's say 155, is when her cycle starts to act up. So she's gotten to a point where she even knows how much she needs to weigh in order for her cycle to regulate and, and be normal. Um, so, yeah. Maybe we should have had a mother-daughter episode. That would be pretty right? cool. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. That would be super awesome. Yeah. How old is your mom, by the way, if you don't mind me asking? Yeah. She, she'll probably kill me. Uh, she's 51. <laughs> Okay. 51. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So she kind of, you know, that was before Google, all of that. And, you know, oh, yeah. it was it was hard to find any information out there really and about PCOS. So, yeah, she definitely struggled, too, because, her, you know, her mom didn't know anything about PCOS. And it really didn't show up, show up until I think when she was pregnant with my older brother, um, she got gestational diabetes from having him. And then when she tried to conceive me is when she really realized the doctor was like, okay, you have PCOS, you're having trouble conceiving. Um, you know, these are the steps you need to go through in order to try and conceive a child. So, yeah. I mean, and so did, did she use Clomid or any kind of medication or? From what I can remember, I'm not sure if she did. I know she thought about going the in vitro route. Um, but I know that, that like a big part of it was a little bit of diet, um, trying to regulate her cycle. Because I think back then, like I said, hers has never been super severe. I know that there's different levels of uh, PCOS, um, but trying to regulate her cycle, trying to change her diet. But I can't 100% remember what it was, but I do think she might have taken some medications to try and um, conceive with me. Yeah. Right. And so, you know, that you have an opportunity to, if let's say for future generations to really reverse what, what's going on. And I think there is a large genetic component to this, as we know, but really being armed with the information you have is going to make such a difference throughout your whole life. I really think so. And, um, and you're just in a great position now with all the knowledge that's out there and everything that you have to, to really help, you know, make significant changes, I think, in your life. And, you know, if you do decide to have kids one day, you'll have that that information. You know, if you have a daughter, I think, you know, it's it's like, well, first thing on your mind sometimes when you when you find out when I was actually pregnant with my daughter, I'm like, well, she might have PCOS. <laughs> <That's Exactly. the first laughs> thing. But if, if so, we'll deal with it. You know, we know we have the, the tools. So um, so as far as um, what what you see uh, I guess out there when you when you also talk with other girls or women that have PCOS um, what do you think the common misconceptions and myths regarding PCOS are like what are some of the misconceptions you see I think the biggest misconception for people um, when they find out someone has PCOS because my best friend actually has PCOS it's so funny Um, and I have another friend who has PCOS but I think the the common misconception is that it's only an irregularity with your cycle. And that is not the case. There are so many other things that are involved with PCOS. Fertility issues, uh, you know, is one. Um, Weight gain and weight uh, maintenance is another. Um, The diabetes component, the insulin resistance is another. Um, With me, for a long time, I used to be very self-conscious about my voice and the the fact that I have a higher testosterone level, so my voice is deeper. Um, I mean, hair loss. Some people suffer hair loss. Uh, Some people suffer hair growth. I have suffered hair growth. Like, I'll get, like, chin hairs, and it drives me crazy. Um, So I think that's the common misconception is that – because even some doctors, are, I feel, are are not super informed about PCOS. And so they think it's just, oh, your cycle is irregular. Okay, well, we'll just put you on, you know, birth control or we'll put you on metformin, which is a diabetes medication. Um, I think that's the common misconception. And then I also think the other common misconception, too, is that it can be treated the same way for every person. And that's not the case. Um, I was fortunate enough that birth control worked for me, but I had a, my best friend, um, started on birth control when she was diagnosed, but it didn't work for her. Um, her hormone levels kind of went crazy and they had to put her on, I guess the lower dosage of birth control. That's what, progesterone or something like that. Um, 
so she couldn't take the same you know version of birth control that I could um, or you know some people who take diabetes medication and that doesn't work for them so it's not a one size fits all I think that's the, the big deal or the big problem and you have to find what works for you um, in the best way possible so those are probably the two biggest yeah yeah, and, and I guess when I was, I was listening to you talk about, you know, uh, the, the myths about PCOS, I think that there's also the one where they think everybody's overweight with PCOS, and that's actually not right. true either, you know, uh, we see. Right, yeah, definitely. There, yeah, there is a lean type PCOS where it's basically you have all the symptoms except the weight gain, and it's puzzling because you're like, well, may, most women are insulin resistant with PCOS, but there are some that actually are not, um, and it's like not it's a minority, but you know you do see it sometimes, and so I think it'd be hard too that those women actually are probably not being looked at by their gynecologist and saying, well, you are overweight, you have the, you know, they're they're right. mostly being misdiagnosed or un, underdiagnosed in a lot of ways, so. Um, Absolutely. But I think that it's import- important to just, you know, share what you said as far as um, you do have to find like not, not there's not one treatment that one size fits all sort of treatment. Um, it's it's basically what works for you. And that's really important. Um, and that's why it is such a it's a syndrome. It's a spectrum of things. It's it's not just one thing. So um, so what would you say to to the girl that, you know, sent the email and said, maybe it's not such a big deal and I probably just I'm fine just ignoring it (laughs) yeah um well one thing I would say is that I was like her at one point (laughs) when I was younger um so I understand where she's coming from because in the year before I got diagnosed I kind of had another incident where I was on my period for about three to four weeks um and I was like it's no big deal like I, I had no problem and my mom suggested the whole birth control thing and in my head, I was like, I'm, I'm 13. I don't need to be on birth control. I'm not active. There's no reason. Like, so I understand exactly where she's coming from and why she would feel that way. Um, but knowing what I know now, um, as far as the just the health risks that are associated with PCOS, um, I would definitely say, you know, it is something you need to take care of. Uh, don't don't diminish uh, how important it can be to try and manage the syndrome. Um, whether, cause I know some people don't want to go the medicine route at all. And I'm completely fine with that. Like if you don't want to take medication, you don't want to take pills, you don't want to take uh, diabetes medication, birth control, whatever it may be, that's absolutely fine. Um, but at least educate yourself enough to know what else works for you. So if you want to pick up a diet, like I have one of the PCOS cookbooks, um, pick up something like that. And when you make your recipes, instead of using, you know, pasta noodles, try zucchini noodles or something that can combat um, the normal symptoms that come with PCOS. So my advice to her would be to just educate herself a little bit more on what the syndrome is and what it entails and what can happen in the future if you don't manage it. Um, Because that's exactly what the doctor told me when I told them, it's no big deal. They were like, no, it's something you need to definitely take care of and then even if it's not a big t- deal to you now because I'm not in a, at a point where I want to have kids or anything like that eventually one day I probably will want to have kids so it will be a big deal when that happens when she makes that decision when she wants to have kids and and wants to conceive so just Great. educate herself. Great and yeah that is that is so important and the fact that you had a doctor who actually was really kind of pushing you to look and look at this a little bit more instead of just giving you the birth control pills and dismissing you i think that's great and you know that's what i think everybody hopes to find somebody that can understand their symptoms and give them a little more information so so bravo with that that's great <laughs> right, right. Um, i was sitting in the doctor's office going it's no big deal and they were like it is a big deal so. uh, great <laughs> great well thank you so much for sharing michelle and um i guess you already did mention the pcos cookbook so would that be um a book that you would re- recommend to to everybody who has pcos Yes, definitely. I would um, recommend that book. I can't remember who it's by, who the author is by. But, yes. Uh, I think it's the, the Insulin Resistance Diet or yeah. something like that. Yeah. Yes. We're actually going to post that link um, and 
we will I think that's a great resource because we've actually had that mentioned before um, and we're actually going to have her on our show too <laughs> so oh, good. yeah so um, I think it's great that it, it's such a good resource for for women out there and if you can have it available um, in your kitchen I mean there, there's several different uh, I think books out there but I think the one that you're talking about is from the PCOS Nutrition Center is that right. uh, the one yeah. that you have yeah so yes. um, and her name is Angela Grassi she is actually um, I think a, a, she's a nutritionist so yeah that's a it's a great resource awesome. yeah so so I'm uh, just so excited thank you guys for listening today and please don't hesitate to share this episode with someone you know who might be suffering out there and uh, just to give them a little more information and also if you need uh, some resources you can uh, contact the PCOS Awareness Association as well so thank you so much Michelle and have a great day everybody all right take care bye-bye And that's the end of this episode of the PCOS Revolution podcast. If you've enjoyed the show and want to help me spread the word about how women with PCOS and hormonal imbalances can lead happier, more healthier lives, please head over to iTunes and leave us a review. They really do make a difference. If you'd like to have a question answered on the show or would like to recommend a guest, please go to floridacompletewellness.com slash podcast. If you're on social media, you can follow me at facebook.com slash florida complete wellness and twitter.com slash florida complete where i post a lot of interesting research webinars and articles on our blog about really getting to the root of hormonal imbalances like pcos so it's a great way to stay in touch with the latest developments thanks so much for listening and see you soon mm-hmm.